Father, I thank you that you have brought us here today to hear another message from your word. And I thank you, Father, that you are the one speaking today. Um, I am uh, I'm weak, I'm broken, I'm just a, I'm just a sinner, Father, but you have made me whole in Jesus. You've made each one of us whole in Jesus, and you've chosen to use us in spite of our weaknesses because of our weaknesses so that you could be glorified through us and so father this morning i pray that you are glorified and not me and father i pray that you would help us as a church to see a, a direction a way to go a forward a way to grow a way to to grow within ourselves a way for this family to reach out and to uh, to show the love that you've shared in here with those outside of this family that this family can grow and spread and the whole world can know your goodness, your love, and your grace through Jesus. So we thank you for our time together this morning around your word to grow within ourselves, change us, encourage us, motivate us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, many of you know that, uh, that Jody and I ran a marathon many years ago. Uh, I know some of you, if that's the first time you've heard that, you went, really? That's amazing. Um, because I don't look like a marathon runner. I'm not a marathon runner. I don't do that often. I did it once. I said I'll never do that again. Um, but I did realize within myself that if there was not some goal for me to work towards, I would not do the things necessary to be in shape enough to achieve those goals. Some people just get up in the morning and they just go running. And I think they need counseling. <laughs> Um, there is, uh, I, I can't remember somebody, several people, I think throughout my life have told me if some, if I'm running, then you better run too. Cause I mean, something's chasing me. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand that, but if there's a goal to be achieved, we do what is necessary to achieve that goal. But when we just go through life every day, it's easy for us to get in a routine, get in a rhythm and kind of settle into, to ways that, um, while they may not necessarily be unhealthy, they're not causing us to grow and to change and to become better. They just become routine. And a lot of times that happens in our churches. We, we go through the same thing over and over again. We do the same things all the time. And we, and we don't look forward. We don't have some kind of goal to achieve beyond heaven. And heaven is a great goal. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying heaven is not a great goal. Heaven is a great goal. But as a church, we need to constantly be looking around going, Going, who's here? Who's not here? Who could be here? How can we as a family grow and reach others? And that's why several years ago, we, we looked at this, this, we call this a mission or vision statement. Love God, love others, be like Jesus. Um, Ted's got a shirt on right now that says that on the back of it. Many of you have that shirt. And it's a great slogan, and it gives us opportunity to tell others out in the community what we're about here at the Aztec Church of Christ. It's a beautiful thing. Love God, love others, be like Jesus. Jesus said these are the greatest commands. Love God and love your neighbor. And God wants us all to be transformed into the image of his son. And so that's our goal here at the Aztec Church of Christ. And, and so what I want us to do for just a minute is I want us to reflect on the last five years. I've been here five years now. Uh, let's reflect on the last five years. And so over the last five years, here's what I'd like for you to do. If within the last five years you became part of this family, would you stand up, please? That's awesome, guys. Thank you guys for coming to be part of this family here. You guys can clap for that. Come on now. Total enthusiasm. Yeah. If within the last five years you've been baptized, would you please stand up? Go ahead and be seated. If... If within the last five years you have contributed financially to the work of this church, would you please stand up? Okay. That's nearly everybody in here, and I just want to say thank you for that. Because the, the kingdom of God is growing because of you. Have a seat. One more. If in the last five years you brought a friend, would you please stand up? Some of you are looking around the room going, hey, I brought you. Yeah, awesome. Okay, 
Please be seated. I want you to see that because there's been a lot of growth over the last five years. We have, we've, we've got families that have moved away. We've got families that have, that have changed things. That we've got people that have passed away. But in the midst of all that, there has been growth in this family. And it's really important for us to remember where we've come from, where we are today, and celebrate the joys of what's gone on. We've had a lot of great things that have happened over the last five years. Within churches, as, as churches look at where they've been and where they're going, um, one of the, the passages of Scripture that comes up over and over again within churches, uh, we in the Churches of Christ love this passage, and it's kind of a mantra passage for a lot of Churches of Christ. And it's Matthew 28, and it says here, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And we look at that verse and we go, This is the mission statement for every church everywhere. Go and make disciples. And that's really great as, as far as a mission statement goes. And some churches, instead of using this one, they use the one over in Mark 16, where it says, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And those are great mission passages. But we've got to realize that those mission statements, those commands from Jesus are to us, to each one of us. Not just to the preacher, but every one of us have been given that mission statement. And I want to show you today, I want to spend some time talking about the nature of this mission. To, to evangelize, to go and, and proselytize, to, to make disciples of all people. I want to show you that this is not something new that just started when Jesus showed up. Back in the Psalms, um, in Psalm 105, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Some of you have, may have a translation or may look at, over in Isaiah. Isaiah quotes this, and he says, Make known among the nations what he has done. All the way back in the Old Testament, God wanted his people to tell everyone that wasn't his people how to be his people. Now, now good news is, is that we in the, in the New Testament, when people come to Jesus, they don't have to have a surgical procedure. It's one of the great things about living as a New Testament church. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Okay? Um, but still, in the Old Testament, people, were, people would come and become Jews we convert to Judaism because being a part of God's chosen people was greater than being a part of these pagan nations out there. In Proverbs, in Proverbs it says this, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. It doesn't mean that you're, you're supposed to go out and, and trick somebody into becoming uh, a follower of Jesus. It's not what he means there. You know, go take a net and, oh, got you. Um, it's not like that at all. But the idea is here, you go out and you find people that don't have hope in God, in Jehovah, and you, you share with them that hope. <coughs> and what you tell them is attractive to them, and they're brought in to the fold of God. Evangelism has always been a part of God's people. It's always been a plan of God. And it's not just a part of his plan. It's imperative. I want to show you real quick how serious this is. Because, because some of you, I really want you to evaluate yourself to see, are you the evangelistic kind of person? And, and you're called to be evangelistic, whether or not you are. And I want you to evaluate yourself. Because I want you to see how serious this is. In Ezekiel chapter 3, it says this. If I, now that's God speaking. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life. That wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you shall have delivered your soul. Church, the wages of sin is... Yeah. <coughs> the whole world has been given a death sentence because of sin. It's everywhere. It's in everyone. And only through Jesus is there freedom from sin and its consequences. Only through Jesus. So the whole world is caught up in an epidemic that is terminal. And you have the cure. And here, according to Ezekiel 3, God says, if you have the cure and you don't offer it, then not only is there blood on their own head, but it's also on yours. I want you to see that because I want you to see how serious God takes evangelism. It's a big deal. 
Because God wants for everyone to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to perish. God is not up there in heaven. Can't, he can't wait to smite somebody. It's not God. I don't, I don't know what kind of God you were raised to believe in, but that's not God. He doesn't want to punish the wicked. He wants the wicked to come and find grace in Jesus. And the way that he does that is by telling them through you. He uses us. To tell other people. And so not only is evangelism imperative in the scripture, but whether or not you're involved in evangelism impacts your eternity. We don't think about that much. We, we kind of blow off evangelism. Well, it's just for those people that are gifted speakers or they're, they're you know, the outgoing kind of people. No, I don't see any caveats in scripture that get you off the hook for evangelism. It doesn't work. No, no excuse can get you off the hook there. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead? Do you believe that the gift of salvation that he brings is the greatest gift that you could ever be given? Why would you not tell anyone about that? Doesn't make sense, does it? And we go, well, what if they say something bad against me or to me or I lose my job or, or people shun me or whatever? What is it worth? What is their salvation worth to you? What is your salvation worth to you? What would you give in exchange for your soul? The Apostle Paul would tell the people in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Consider your calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Some of you sitting here today, you're going, but I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. I'm not qualified. Okay. If you can say that you don't feel like you're wise according to worldly standards, would you raise your hand? Do you feel like you're powerful? If you don't feel like you're powerful according to worldly standards, would you raise your hand? Any of you noble birth? If you're not of noble birth, raise your hand. He doesn't just stop there. He goes on. He said, but God chose what is foolish in the world. Anybody ever acted foolishly? He chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. Anybody ever felt weak? God chose what is low and despised. Anybody ever felt that way? <clears throat> Even things that are not. You don't feel like you're worth anything. The message that you have, you feel like nobody will even pay attention. He chose the things that are not to bring nothing, bring to nothing things that are. So that no human being might boast in the presence of God. What I want you to see here is what Paul is saying is that you were chosen by God precisely because you're not good enough. Precisely because you're not powerful, you're not you're not, according to the world, you're not the be-all, end-all. Because, do you know why Bill Gates isn't the biggest evangelist in the world? God doesn't want to use Bill Gates to be an evangelist. Because Bill Gates could look at his own money and say, see, I did this all on my own. Some of you, you go, I have nothing to give. God says, that's exactly what I want. I want you to know that you have nothing because when you give, you recognize that it's only from God that you can give. So then you don't boast in yourself. Look at all the people I brought to the Lord. No, look at all the people that God brought to himself and he happened to use me to do it. Right? That's the attitude that we should have. And each and every one of you is qualified according to this. Because each and every one of you feel foolish at times. You feel weak at times. You feel powerless at times. You, sometimes people despise you, and yet you're the very people that God has chosen to share the gospel with others. We look to, um, we look to passages like Matthew 28 and Mark 16, and we read those what we call the Great Commission. And we, and we go into all the world and make disciples and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And, and what I want to share with you this morning is that those verses are great for us to think about, but they're really intimidating because the way that we've treated this in the church is if you don't, 
if you don't know these certain passages in this certain order, you don't know enough to be able to tell somebody the good news about Jesus. And let me tell you, church, if you haven't shared the gospel with somebody because you don't feel like you're intellectual enough biblically, you're, you're biblically literate enough, you don't understand evangelism. One of the greatest evangelistic messages that I've ever seen in the scriptures is not when Jesus was talking to a bunch of religious leaders or even to the 12 that had been following him for three years. It was when he found this guy who was broken and empty because Jesus had driven out thousands of demons out of this guy. And he looked at him and he said this. He said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And you know what the guy did? He did exactly that. He went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. Everyone marveled. Did they marvel because this guy was awesome? No. They marveled because of what God, what Jesus had done through him. You got this guy who used to be naked and crazy and driven by demons. Now he's sane. And he's telling you how he got sane is through Jesus. And you go, wow. Has Jesus ever done anything for you? Has he ever changed your life? Is there anything different about you today than there was before you knew Jesus? And I'm going to tell you, you have a message for others. You don't have to be a biblical scholar in order to tell people what the Lord has done for you. So here's, so here's what I want, to see, I want you to see today. Tomorrow is a brand new year. And every year people talk about uh, New Year's resolutions. And I want you to make one. Okay, I'm asking you to make a New Year's resolution this year. For the whole year of 2018, I want us to have a theme for our Sunday mornings. You're going to hear a lot about this in 2018, and I really want to try to help you as best I can. I want you to help each other as best you can. But the theme for 2018 is this. Go and tell. It's the same message that Jesus gave to the guy that had all the demons in him. Go and tell. Go and tell. I want us to be a church that is reaching out. I want us to be a church that is telling others the good news of Jesus. And so for 2018, we need some goals. Because what happens when we don't have goals is we just kind of meander around. We don't, we don't go somewhere particularly. So for 2018, here's some goals for 2018 for each one of us. Okay? The first one is this. To have an increase in the size of our family here. Look around. Look at all the empty chairs. We've got room to grow. So in 2018, let's commit to that. In fact, what I'd like for us to see this morning, I think the count this morning was like 117 here. Okay, and that's a great, that's a great Sunday morning. But it would be very simple for us to have 150 people here every Sunday. It would be really simple to do so. But it means that we would need to get out and talk to people. 2018 goals. More souls captured by love. More souls captured by love. What that means is that we have baptisms this next year. People turn their life over to Jesus. I'd love to see 10 baptisms this next year. I think this year we had six that I can remember off, off the top of my head. Maybe more, but I know we had six. Ten. It's not a big, huge number. It's totally doable. Okay? And, and God wants to do that through us. Do you think God wants other people to be saved? Sometimes God is just waiting for us to allow him to work through us rather than to resist. No, not me. God, pick somebody else. Moses tried that. Go back and read his story. God didn't pick somebody else. The third goal, generosity increased. Okay? And I put this in here because I want you to know, um, I don't know all the final details of the numbers for the year or whatever, but um, pretty much every month this year, we had this budget that's in your bulletin on the back page there, okay? Or on the, I guess it's on the inside, right-hand side. There's a goal there. We, we fell at least $1,000 of that short every month this year. That means we're like 12000 or more 
find where we were going for. Okay? So the goal for 2018 is to meet or exceed that number. Okay? Now, numbers are numbers are, are things. They're, they're, they're tools. Okay? Money is a tool. It's not, it's not the goal. The goal isn't the money. The goal is that you guys would be generous enough that we could could achieve that goal so that more good can be done in our community, with our kids, with the congregation, reaching out to others, missions, and, and other places around the world. The goal is the same goal for the money as it is for inviting your friends, as it is for having baptisms. The goal is that the kingdom grows, not only here in Aztec, but in San Juan County and around the world. The kingdom grows because of this congregation, because what God is doing through this congregation here. And so I want to ask you guys to respond to this message today in a very tangible way. Um, I'd like to ask all the sixth graders that are here to please come up here for just a minute. All the sixth graders. If you're in sixth grade, would you please come here? Sixth grade. Okay. Or seventh grade. Come on up. Mm -hmm. And come on up. I need several of you. Okay. Everybody that can read needs one of these cards, okay? Um, and, if, and if you've got a loved one that's that's missing, then um, then raise your hand, grab two of them or whatever. Okay, we've got we should have plenty. I think I printed like 120 of them or something. On the front side of the card is a list of goals. Okay, it's exactly what's up here with a little bit of description there. Goals for 2018. The goal to have an increase in the size of our family, for more souls to be captured by love, for generosity to be increased, and for the kingdom to grow. These are goals. They're goals for every church. They're goals that I want us to keep in the forefront of our mind as we go through 2018. But on the back of the card, if you'll turn the card over, okay? On the back of the card, this is how I'd like for you guys to respond to the message today. Now, before your head explodes... I am not asking you guys to turn those cards into me. Okay? I'm not asking for that. What I want you to do is if you agree to that pledge right there, to respond to the message in that way, then sign your name on it. Write your name in the first blank and sign your name at the bottom. And tape it to your mirror in your bathroom at your house. So when you wake up in the morning, you see... I am committing to trying to get five of my friends throughout the year to come and experience the love of this family. And you don't have to stop at five. You, can't, you, don't, you don't have to go, okay, I got five, I'm done. Okay? And some of you may not be able to get five here, but you've tried. It's a goal. Okay? And the second part of that pledge is to evaluate your giving. I'm not saying you have to give more. I'm just asking you to evaluate it. If you can give more, then please do so. Please help the kingdom grow through that this year. And so as you look at your card, look at the back of it. See, can you agree to that? If you can, sign your name on it, put it on your mirror, and commit in 2018 to helping the kingdom of God grow through the family here in Aztec. You guys understand? Any questions about that? Okay. It may be the, 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 a different kind of invitation than normal, okay? And in just a minute, we're going to sing a song, and you're welcome to come and ask for prayers, and, and, and you're welcome to come and say, hey, I'm signing my card, and I want everybody to know it because I want everybody to hold me accountable to it. You're welcome to do that, and you're welcome to be captured by his love today for the first time. If there's anything we can do for you, we're going to pray right now. And then Cody's going to lead us in one more song. And uh, during that song, come and let us know. But would you pray with me, please? Yeah. Father, I pray for everyone who has received a card today that there will be commitments to reach out to their friends and neighbors and to begin evangelism by just simply inviting people to come and experience the love of this family. 
I pray for everyone to be able to evaluate how much they're putting their faith in you by how they give. And I pray, Father, that through 2018, you would be glorified in all that would happen here, Father, that, that growth would happen because of you and your presence here. Not because of us, because we're all weak and we're broken and we're powerless, but you are strong in us. And so thank you, Father, for choosing us in spite of us, in spite of our brokenness. We thank you, Father, that you have redeemed us from our sinful ways. And Father, as we learn and grow this year, help us, help us to see your kingdom grow because of your work in Aztec, in San Juan County, and beyond. Thank you, Father, that you have desired to use us in these ways. Thank you, Father, that you desire for your kingdom to grow. Thank you for the chance to start over today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If we can help you guys.